Congressman Lewis, if there ever was a person that you say needs no introduction, you were it. <laughs> we are so honored that you were here. And you have single-handedly, though, revived graphic novels as a way to tell, I mean, look at you, <laughs> as a way to tell history and an important history. So many young people are inspired by what you have given in the graphic format. But can I ask a question before you start? Yes. Did you say that you were inspired by a comic book about Dr. Martin Luther King? Yes, I did. And uh, let me just tell you, thank you for being you. Thank you for being the librarian of the U.S. Congress, the librarian of America. Thank you for all of your great and good work. I'm so honored to be in your presence. We're going to be really, really brief. Uh, most of you know that I grew up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, outside of a little place called Troy. My father was a sharecropper, a tenant farmer. But back in 1944, when I was four years old, and I do remember when I was four, my father had saved $300, and a man sold him 110 acres of land. My family still own this land today. When I was a little boy growing up, I fell in love with raising chickens. Some of you have probably been reading the chicken story. It is a true story. When uh, the setting hen was set, we would mark the fresh egg with a pencil, place them under the setting hen, and wait for three long weeks for the little chicks to hatch. I know some of you may be saying, oh, John Lewis, why did you mark the fresh egg with a pencil before you place them under the setting hen? Well, from time to time, another hen we get on that same nest and there would be some more fresh eggs. You had to be able to get a fresh eggs from the eggs that were already under the setting hen. So when the little chicks were hatched, I would fool the setting hen, I would cheat on the setting hen. And we'd just give the hen some more fresh eggs and you know, raise some more little bitties. We call them bitties, bitties, little chicks, little chicks. But I wanted to be a minister, so we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard that you gathered here. My brothers and sisters and cousins were lying outside of the chicken yard, and I would start preaching. And when I look back on it, some of these chickens would bow their heads, some of these chickens would shake their heads. They never quite said amen. But some of those chickens tended to listen to me much better than some of my colleagues listened to me today in the Congress. Don't tell them I said it, but uh, you know, some of those chickens were just a little more productive, at least they produce eggs. When my mother and father wanted a chicken for a meal, I didn't like it. I would boycott the meal. Even before I heard of Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Park, I was engaging in a boycott. But growing up there, I saw those signs that said, white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting, white boys, colored boys, white girls, colored girls. I was asked, why, why, why? So that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. But Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me to get in trouble. What I call good trouble, necessary trouble. So in 1957, 58, I read a little comic book called Martin Luther King Jr. and the Montgomery Story. Told the story of the Montgomery bus walker. Dr. King helped edit this little book. In 1957, I met Rosa Parks. The next year, I met Martin Luther King Jr. and I got involved in the Civil Rights Movement. So March is the story of my involvement from the sit-ins to Freedom Rides, the march from Selma to Montgomery, the march on Washington, and there are people today saying nothing has changed. I feel like saying, come and walk in my shoes. I will show you change. 
The signs that I saw, they are gone, and they will not return. The only place that we will see those signs today will be in a book, in a museum, on a video. A country is a different country. A country is a better country. But we have to still struggle to redeem the soul of America and to create the beloved community. But we must remember, March is saying that we are one people, that we are one family. We all live in the same house, not just the American house, but the world house. And that we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters, as Dr. King said, if not we will perish as food. Now I got arrested a few times during the 60s, 40 times. And since I've been in Congress, another five times. <laughs> and I'm probably going to get arrested again for something. For it's my belief, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you should say something. You should do something. You should speak up. Speak out and find a way to get in the way. And March will inspire another generation of young people to stand up, speak up, and speak out, and lead us to a better time in a better place. Thank you very much. <laughs>